Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use a free piece of software for a CNC machine called Easel. When it comes to the software side of CNC, you have a ton of options. And the software that you choose is really dependent on what you wanna do with it. When you talk about CNC mills and their software, you'll often see things that are listed as 2.5D or 3D. Now the difference between those two is much like a contour map versus a topographical map. 2.5D cuts along a plane, X and Y, and then it moves that plane down and cuts again. 3D can do all three axes at the same time. Now the software I'm going to show you right now is called Easel, and it's made by Inventables, and it only does 2.5D cutting. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because it's free, it's browser-based, and it's really quick and easy. As an example, I'm going to show you how I cut the logo for this sign right here. So let's go take a look. Like I said, it's browser-based, so you're going to go to easel.com and create a free account. And then from here, you'll see that I already have some projects that are already saved in my easel. And you can click one of those and it'll open up easel with your previous file loaded, ready to cut. But for this example, we're gonna start a new project. Now I've created my design elsewhere in Adobe Illustrator, but you could do any kind of vector graphic and save it as an SVG file. And that's just a vector graphic file. So when you import that in, it drops it right in. In this case, I wanted to scale it up so that it was about eight inches wide. Manipulating the graphics are just like any other program. It gives you a bounding box with some corners that you can drag, you can rotate, and then there's a nice 3D representation of what your file is gonna look like on the right side. And that material that's being displayed there comes from a library of materials that Easel already has installed. Each one of these materials obviously looks different, but it also has a preset thickness, as well as feed rate and depth per pass. The feed rate is how quickly the tool is gonna to move through the material. The depth per pass is how deep it's gonna cut on every pass. So as you change materials, you'll see all those settings change as well as the thickness on the right change. Another item in the menu you'll wanna check out is the machine. Mainly it just has the bit size in it and you need to put that bit size so that Easel knows how much material it's gonna remove every time it makes a cut. There's some other tools on the screen that you might use if you didn't already have a design. There's some icons, there's fonts, there's some basic shapes. And you can put those together to make your own design. You also have the normal alignment tools like you would have in any other graphics program. And once you have an item selected, you'll see that this pop-up comes up with a depth of cut. And as you move that up and down, you'll both see the color on the left change as well as the depth on the right change. So you can kind of get a nice preview of how deep the cut is going to be on your design. You could also set it by the number in the depth field, and then you have options for fill or outline if you actually want to cut the whole thing out or cut a line around the design. And in this case, I actually want to cut these pieces out so that I can remove them. But once you cut a piece out completely from what's holding it in place, it's going to fly off. To avoid this, you can check the checkbox that says Use Tabs. When Easel goes to generate its paths to make the cut, it leaves a tab at the bottom layer to make sure that the piece stays in place while the cutting happens. The blue lines here represent where the bit is going to go. So as you see the blue lines layered up, you're seeing each pass that it's going to make in the material, and then the section in the middle there for the tab that's not going to get cut out. Easel's going to avoid using that. Now if I turn the Use Tabs off and regenerate the paths, you'll see that tab is gone. Sometimes it's fine to cut without tabs, sometimes it's not. In this case, it's a little bit safer because I want the piece to stay in place and not get thrown around or get hit by the bit and get torn up. So I'm gonna leave them on and regenerate the paths. Once you're satisfied with your design and your paths look good, you just hit carve. Now this opens a little wizard that you have to follow just to make sure that everything is where it should be. You need to confirm the thickness of your material. You need to confirm that your material is clamped down so it doesn't go flying when you start cutting. You wanna confirm the size of your bit. Then you're gonna tell the machine to raise the bit. This is gonna get the bit up off of the work surface so it can move it into position for the first cut without tearing up the surface of the material. Once the bit has moved into starting position, you wanna turn the spindle on and then confirm it with the button. Once you've confirmed that, then you should be able to just start cutting. Now the software is really that easy to use. There's not a whole lot to it. It does most of the work for you. And so you can go from design thought to having a cutout piece really, really quickly. Now personally, I've used it to cut pieces out like this. I've engraved signs. I've cut out parts for some stuff I'm working on. 
I mean, I've used it a lot and it makes it really fast to get the CNC in action in your shop. If you have any more questions about the software, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them, but probably the best place to go would be easel.com. I hope that was helpful and if you want to see how I actually built this sign, just click on it or the link down in the description and I'll take you over there and you can check it out. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.